zero to 60 in two seconds, but 60% depreciation in five years. This is the world of electric cars. From Ford to Tesla to Toyota to any really car brand you can think about, electric cars were trying to be pushed. And for the most part, everyone thought that that was what was gonna happen. You know, car manufacturers thought that since the government was doing this ban that people were just gonna flip the script and automatically just start buying all their electric cars. But it seems that all these companies forgot that the government can say one thing, but ultimately it is up to the consumer. So we the people, and it's up to us to decide if we really want this car or not. And unfortunately to a lot of car manufacturers this May, uh, nobody wanted them. Legacy automakers are mainly the automakers who are really suffering from this. And to be honest, the term legacy automaker, I'm not sure if it was just made up by the community or if it has an actual meaning. But basically what a legacy automaker is, is a company or brand who didn't specialize initially in electric vehicles. So think of it as something like uh, as Ford or Toyota, Honda, Porsche, Mercedes, cars like that, brands like that, you know. And for example, a brand that would not be a legacy automaker would be a brand like Rivian or Tesla or Lucid because they started off really just making electric cars. So like I said a couple minutes ago, they could push this business plan however much they want it, you know. They could really try to make these electric cars, but ultimately it is up to the people. I remember there was a statistic somewhere where I'm pretty sure Ford is losing $100,000 on every single Ford EV that is sold. To be honest, I don't even know the math of that. Um, <laughs> I don't know if that count counters into like depreciation, uh, stuff like that. Sucky day to be Ford. And you know, I think the biggest thing that really stops these legacy automakers from really being successful is just think about their consumer, their, their, uh, their customer base. You know, for like a traditional electric car brand, you know you go to Tesla and you know you're going to Tesla to get an electric car. You know you're going to Rivian to get an electric car. You know, that's just how it is. But I feel like years and years and years and years of just marketing has really pushed people to not see these legacy automakers as someone who you would buy an electric car from. You know, brands like Dodge. I feel like Dodge in the back of my head has always been known for their muscle cars and for big beefy engines. And to just take that away, I feel like you're really stripping away a really large part of their fan base. Um, even with Ford, you know, when I think about a Ford, I think about a Ford F-150. Sorry to all the Mustang lovers. I love the Mustang, but when I think about Ford, I think about a work truck. And when I think about work trucks, I think about middle-class men who want a nice, tough V8 to tow all their things around. Something that's been tried and tested, you know? You know, I do feel like electric vehicles will work good with like Rolls Royce. That would be nice. Cause I mean, they're all silent, all luxury anyways. They might as well throw an electric motor in there to have it super, super silent. You know, on one end of the spectrum, I really do admire these automakers and these brands trying to do something different, you know? They're really trying to just adapt with the times. Uh, the government's giving them incentives. The government is telling them by 2030, you gotta stop producing internal combustion engine cars. So I do respect that they are trying to like conform and trying to at least keep the business alive. Cause at the end of the day, they don't want their business to go out of brand. I know so many people who don't want electric cars, but, and I'm sure that Ford and GM and Chevy, I'm sure that they don't want electric cars either, to be honest, cause they're doing horrible, but they have to do it. But most of them just aren't sure if they can do it. I have a little list right here on my phone real quick. I'm going to tell you guys a couple brands that are, that were committed to the EV pledge, but I've since then either said that we're not committed to that anymore, or they are committed. But it's just going to take longer than they thought. So number one, a brand I was talking about a lot here because Ford because I feel like that's where you hear the most news about the EVs you know the trucks all that stuff so Ford initially ambitious about its EV targets Ford has since adjusted its production goals and timelines due to rising costs and market challenges so basically Ford there they really were trying to do it they were one of the first brands you know I think I remember seeing Joe Biden driving an electric F-150 or something so they were really one of the pioneers trying to really get this going but like we've seen and it sucks for them doesn't really suck for us like we've seen nobody's buying their trucks I've seen lots and lots and lots filled with electric F-150 I feel like I've only known like one person with an electric F-150. So yeah, nobody wants them. Sorry. Another brand is General Motors. So while still committed to EVs, General Motors has tempered its timelines and production plans in response to supply chain issues and market demand. I'm going to be completely honest. I do not know what the supply chain issues are, but just like Ford, market demand is still there. Nobody's going to GM to buy an electric car. Delantis, you know, this is another one that I was talking about. You know, they cover Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge. And this is the one that really confused me because Dodge out of all brands really trying to go electric. It just makes no sense to me. You know, I've seen their electric charger. It sounded like a car in Forza. Not even Forza Horizon 5, Forza Horizon like one. It sounds like a video game. <laughs> so Stellantis, the parent company of brands like Chrysler and Jeep, has reevaluated its EV strategies, focusing on profitability over aggressive targets. So their aggressive target that they're talking about
about was trying to get to that um that all ev by 2030 i keep on bringing 2030 up a lot because that was when i'm not i know it was in california at least where i live but I'm, i don't know about the whole world but 2030 was when a lot of the brands are said okay no no more electric cars so they reevaluated their strategy um so they still want to do it but they reevaluating like cost and all that stuff trying to bring that in there trying to make a decent electric vehicle that could actually be profitable so going across the world to europe we have the volkswagen group um i did mention porsche earlier i know porsche had the macan and the tycon i don't think the tycon is getting discontinued but i know the macan electric one is still going to be sold alongside a gasoline variant which wasn't always the plan you know they wanted to just have the macan electric that's it so the volkswagen group volkswagen has faced delays in its ev rollout and has revised its investment plans reflecting a more cautious approach so basically what they're going to be doing is they're still going to be going for it they're going to be doing a more monitored and more strategic approach to it because i think what really went wrong with all these manufacturers is they really just try to do it all at once you know just boom give me all electric cars i can when really they should have probably done what honda and toyota wants to do they wanted to they want to go a more hybridized route first they don't think the world is a let is ready for fully electric cars yet and i cannot agree anymore you know i live in southern california um we have to shut the power grids off in the summer sometimes because it gets too hot and we might run out of power our power grid cannot support millions and millions of new electric cars unless we get nuclear energy going shout out nano nuclear so next up is nissan nissan has scaled back its earlier ambitious ev targets citing challenges in meeting production and market expectations so the, one of the biggest market challenges and production challenges for nissan was that just like every other ev car um, some hybrid cars is you need a lot more rare earth materials for these cars you need cobalt uh, lithium stuff like that and not only is that harder to get but it is going to be very competitive you got thousands of car brands around the world who are trying to make this switch so it's pretty competitive trying to do that trying to get those materials so bringing this back we're going to be talking about you the consumer the viewer a consumer of my content which i have plenty of other videos you guys can watch also so like i said the consumer is what is really going to make or break a business I think the worst things when it comes to electric cars and what stops me from getting an electric car is the price point. I feel like electric cars are normally $10,000 more than a standard vehicle. And not only are they on average more expensive, they usually depreciate way faster than a normal vehicle also. And you know me, I'm not gonna say I'm the best guy with money, but I'm pretty financially literate, you know? We got that knowledge over here. Y'all remember Ty Lopez? Get a bunch of books, y'all. Gonna be straight up, I haven't even read these yet. <laughs> people, especially money conscious people, they don't wanna invest into an EV because we know that they depreciate thousands and thousands of dollars. Like I said, Tesla from earlier, I was making a little joke about it going to zero to 60 in two seconds, but depreciating 60% in five years. I didn't make that up. Uh, the Tesla Model S has a five year depreciation rate of 57%. And that is not just with Teslas. Um, I feel like EVs just in general have horrible depreciation rates. Uh, look at the Porsche Taycan, my favorite car brand. You know, I, they're my favorite, but I'm not scared to diss them. I've seen when this car came out, it was going for like $90,000 base model starting price in like 2020 and i've actually seen some on the second hand marketplace for like 35 40 thousand dollars that is an insane depreciation rate i don't know how anybody could get behind that that's like 60 percent i've seen these these uh i've seen these mustang mach e's and these also just depreciate like crazy you could go and buy a nice one for thirty thousand dollars and to be honest at these depreciated price points that is what makes these evs kind of actually worth it another some of the bigger talk points are the infrastructure and anxiety about the range that is one of the main things the reason why i I don't get an ev if there was an ev out there on the market that could last 500 miles and it had the infrastructure to go to where i want to go which i know it does not then i would get one you know i'm somebody who drives thousands of miles and travel every single year last month i went to the grand canyon and that was a 500 mile trip there are no ev charging stations at the north rim of the grand canyon so nobody tried no one tried to correct me i would not be able to take my electric car from here and into the grand canyon as much as i would love to because to be honest as much as other people are against electric cars i like cars i like the noise you know, I'll be sitting there looking at cars on my phone, making noises in my head. I'm not too against them, to be honest. Like, I really wouldn't mind getting a nice electric car. You know, those Pulsars, they're beautiful. I would totally get one. But it's just the range and the infrastructure. And going back to what I said earlier, in Southern California, we have to shut off the power in the summer because the infrastructure can't handle the heat. How are we going to handle 100 million more electric cars? Electric vehicles really aren't all that bad, though. When it comes to pocketing money, they are. When it comes to anything about money, electric vehicles are terrible. But as we know, they are better for the environment. I know people are going to bring up 
up the mining costs and stuff like that. But in general, in terms of greenhouse emissions, they are better for the environment. They are quiet if you like a quieter ride. But as of right now, I know there are just not nearly as much selections for EVs as there are for, you know, gasoline powered cars, SUVs, trucks, all that stuff. But in like 10 years, I'm sure there'll be a lot of variety to get through, you know. <laughs> Another great thing about EVs is I know that they have great tax incentives, um, especially where I live here in California. At one point, there's a $7,500 tax incentive for buying a brand new EV car. And there are EV leases everywhere with amazing deals. And that kind of goes in hand in hand with what I'm talking to you guys about how these legacy automakers cannot sell their EV cars because no one wants them. There tends to be a lot of amazing EV lease deals out there. I'm gonna show you guys some as I'm talking over this. EVs also have lower operating costs. You know, when you just have a motor and simple gearing and you know, brakes, uh, wear and tear items, you're gonna have a cheaper upkeep. But another con is with that cheaper upkeep, it's normally more of an all at once sort of thing. Um, I've seen people get quoted tens of thousands of dollars to fix electric components. And this doesn't just go with electric vehicles. This can go with hybrid cars too, because that's actually where I got this from. Uh, people having to pay $10,000 to replace a hybrid battery. Or when this electric battery goes out, it's the same thing. People pay $10,000 to get it rebuilt. So on average, there are lower operating costs. But in the long, long run, you're better off just getting a new car. Some more things that are bad about electric cars, the range. Um, I know we've had a couple of electric cars that have hit 600 miles of range. I think one of the Lucid Air cars could do that. But people who really love their time, you're not going to be able to get them to buy an electric car. Sitting there at an electric charge station for a long time versus filling up your gas in five minutes, it's a big difference to people who care about their time. I know you guys are going to say like the whole, oh, you can charge to 80% in five minutes. Well, in five minutes, you can refill a gasoline engine to 100%. So don't be crazy. EV, hybrid, or internal combustion engine. Those are your choices. Tell me in the comments what you would get. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. See you guys later.